Welcome to Planet Mira, the world of Xenoblade Chronicles X. This is John from Digital Foundry, and today we're going to take a look at the performance and presentation in this exclusive open world role playing game. Crafted for the Wii U hardware, Xenoblade X delivers one of the most expansive worlds in games today. Yet, on comparable hardware such as Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, such large scale games did not often turn in stable performance. The same can be said of the few open world games that have been ported over to Nintendo's console as well. Without the ability to natively install games to built in storage, bringing such a large scale title to the system is no small feat. With Xenoblade X, however, Monolith Soft has clearly placed a premium on nailing down smooth performance on a large scale. There are sacrifices that had to be made, but the end result is nothing short of spectacular. First and foremost, it needs to be said that this is a very long game indeed. We played around 15 hours of the game, capturing footage along the way, but we feel this is a fair sample size of the game's general level of performance. With that in mind, let's go ahead and enable the frame rate analysis tool to get a better idea. Basically, we see a target of 30 frames per second here with VSync engaged. This level of performance manages to hold steady throughout much of the game. We see minor dips in a number of situations, but the overall performance is excellent. In order to put this to the test, we went hunting not for monsters, but for frame rate drops. Well, we didn't find many. Of course, we didn't actually have to look very far to find our first one either. An instance of slowdown can be seen during the game's beautiful introduction to Planet Mira. As the camera pans around the scenery, you'll notice a momentary performance drop. Okay, let's stop here for a moment and discuss a couple of interesting points while we're here. First of all, the scene highlights one of the visual sacrifices made to hit the target frame rate. Alpha Texture Resolution. If you look at the edges around objects bathed in transparent clouds, you'll notice mild sawtooth edges here. Uh, you can see it here as well. It's not something we noticed regularly, but when it does pop up, it does tend to stick out. When used on a large scale, these effects can actually have an impact on overall image quality as well, as you can see. Anyways, back to the performance analysis. Pushing forward through the intro, the rest of the scenes turn in very stable performance and we're given a look at some beautiful visuals in action here. One pleasant surprise here is the use of motion blur. It's often applied just to the edges of the screen, but it greatly improves the sense of fluidity. It's a nice touch that we did not expect. This scene really makes a strong first impression, doesn't it? The whole, see that mountain over there, you can go there trope is well worn at this point. But in the case of Xenoblade X, it really bears repeating. The land visible during this intro is one of several fully explorable areas, with no additional loading screens present at any point. It's entirely seamless. Let's move on to some actual gameplay then. Running along you'll note a very stable 30 frames per second update here. Exploring the world feels great, and the performance keeps up nicely. What makes exploration even more enjoyable here is the sheer number of tweakable options available to the player. You can pull the camera way out like this, or zoom all the way into a full on first person viewpoint. Though the lack of camera bob means that it doesn't quite feel natural. If we pop open the menu here however, a large number of additional options are available for tweaking your experience. You can for instance adjust the camera position to rest all the way to the left of your character, or all the way to the right. You can also change the way the camera itself feels. Adjusting track speed here toggles between a smooth, floaty type of camera or a snappier, more direct camera. You can also enable or disable every visual element on the HUD. It's great for screenshots, of course, but thanks to the gamepad screen, it's actually still possible to play the game without an on-screen HUD, at least during exploration. So how about we take a look at some combat then? Looking at performance again, we can say that the general experience holds up at 30 frames per second. 
Combat is menu driven, so drops wouldn't necessarily have a serious impact on gameplay, but it still looks nicer when everything is animated smoothly. That said, we did encounter some minor drops in other sequences. Doing battle in the swamps here, for instance, results in minor drops along the frame rate graph. With as long as this game is, it's entirely possible that additional moments like this could pop up during gameplay, but during our time with the game, this was about as bad as it got. Moving on, let's take a look at some of the game's visual sacrifices made in service of performance. First and foremost, we have Poppin. This is perhaps the most noticeable compromise made in the pursuit of a stable frame rate. Watch here as we run through the Blade District. All sorts of objects are completely missing from view until the player is within close proximity. The effect is even more pronounced than the issues we found in Halo 5. We see the same issues with LODs. Look at the building here. A simple structure with a low resolution texture, it remains this way until we are close enough that it triggers a higher quality LOD. Thankfully, out in the natural world, the game fares better. Pop-in remains an issue, but it feels less intrusive here and never manages to spoil the otherwise beautiful world. And that very world is quite important to the experience as a whole. What separates this world from so many others are the ways in which players can effectively break the rules. Standing above New LA here, one would imagine that a leap into the water below would result in death, right? Well, let's jump in and see. Nope, still alive. You then need to find a way to climb back up. Basically, it often feels as if you can traverse areas that would be off limits in many other games. You're not limited to climbing specific sets of stairs or sticking to certain paths. You can really just go off and do as you please. It's quite freeing, really, and it is a strong point for the game. One strange thing we notice stems from the game's collision detection, or, more appropriately, the lack thereof. As we run through the city, the player just moves right through the cars, as if they weren't even there. It's not clear if this type of thing is designed to save on performance, or if it was just a decision made to avoid dealing with injured players in the city. Either way, it is bizarre looking. Another interesting thing we noticed in the game relates to shadows. Xenoblade X features a dynamic time of day system, yet its shadow maps are completely static. We've created this short time lapse sequence here to demonstrate just what we mean. You can see the shadow beneath the land bridge here, yet it never actually moves. It remains completely static at all times, regardless of the position of the sun. When night eventually falls, the game simply fades the shadow out of view. So while shadow rendering is reasonably clean, it lacks the dynamism we'd expect from an open world game. Ultimately though, Xenoblade Chronicles X is a beautiful game with a very stable frame rate. It's really the only game of its kind on Wii U right now, and it works wonderfully. Even with some of its blemishes, it's hard not to be impressed by what has been achieved on Nintendo's little box. Anyway, that's all for now. Be sure to check out the rest of our channel on YouTube for more videos like this, and until next time, this is John signing off.